two steps backward and one step forward seems to be the name of the game right now. So let's go grab a coffee. Let's head back home. Man, y'all, we got a lot to talk about. Let's dive in. All right, the world must be crumbling beneath us or something because in the last video, I was super excited that I got onto Realm and Atlas, MongoDB, whatever you want to call it, and we're already off it. So here's what happened in the last week. I can't believe I just got that on video. Uh, so we have a problem. Come here. Let me let me show you. Let me show you. Realm is uh, definitely not going to work, and I just discovered the dang bug of why. So check this out. If I enter an email, example at example.com, I have a hack on the back end so that it just, uh, you know, your password's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's fine. That's, you know, known problem, blah, blah, blah. Was working through it. You're already signed in. So you go to the dashboard. Oh my goodness. Do you all see this flickering? Look at the console. Turns out if you use anything other than a anonymous login, you cannot set initial projects here. So if we comment that out, save that sucker, magically works. So as y'all can see, Realm is just not mature enough and I could have fought my way through it. I could have made it work. But truthfully, I think that would have taken a lot of time away from the real product and getting an MVP out just to make Realm and MongoDB work. So we pivoted once again, and now we're on Superbase, Superbase Auth, DB storage and public bucket storage for images. And this is what we're gonna stick with for the short time. Now it did suck. Like I had to make a real pivot on something that I felt pretty strongly about. And that was the local first approach. Obviously with Superbase, unless I integrate something like watermelon DB, which for my research is not that great. I don't have a local first approach anymore, but I made the executive decision a product out in the world without local first approach is better than a product not out in the world literally at all so i think this is going to be significantly better just for pushing forward on the things that i should be making progress on being like designing new screens working out user flow and things like that and speaking of user flow let's talk about auth see auth can be one of those tricky things where you're going to have people that feel very strongly about whether it's email password, whether it's SMS, whether it's, you know, some other kind of OTP, whether it's social media auth, you know, Google auth, Apple auth, things like that. And uh, yeah, we're sticking simple. We're going email OTP. So no authenticator app right now, no SMS. I actually would have liked SMS, but I found out that it gets very expensive very quickly and it's just not worth the time right now. So we're completely skipping Google and Apple auth. And we're doing that because if you are unfamiliar in this space, if you add Google Auth to an iOS build, you have to add Apple Auth or your build is gonna get rejected. So I said, well, I can't get rejected if I use neither. So I think this is gonna streamline the operations. I think it's gonna be super simple. You don't have to manage a password anymore. It's a magic link with a code. You still have a session and we'll eventually have to re-verify, re-get in your session, blah, blah, blah. But everything is just tied to your email, super simple and I think it's gonna be way more fun. So with this OTP magic link, it just leverages Superbase's JWT. And originally that's what I was going to hook into MongoDB. Mongo allows you to provide a custom JWT as long as you know who is signing it. And like I said, y'all saw earlier, it just shit the bed, it doesn't work. I actually found Stack Overflows where they claim that they fixed this. Uh, yeah, it still just doesn't work. So I don't wanna waste time there. Hell yeah, Superbase, y'all are super easy to integrate with and i think at first i'm going to start with a client only type approach here where i'm not going to spin up another back end server eventually i will but definitely not for the mvp i need to get this product out and get it into some hands so that people can actually start giving me real feedback but it is a beautiful day outside right now here in central pennsylvania it's been raining again the last few days 
So we're going to jump outside, get on a laptop, and uh, hopefully have a little bit of a code session. So grab a fun drink, pull up a seat, get your laptop, and let's go have a code session together. Come on. So check this out. This is the start of the auth flow. Things will get tightened up and cleaned up. The flow through it will get a little better. Right now, you have one option, it's email. And I'll probably include like a uh, password backup just for the people where the magic link is just not working for whatever reason. I have uh, put in a test email here. Uh, I've hooked up anything at, at example.com. The password's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is only on the local development server, so don't try it. But you come in here, you request a code. This is where the real deal, you'll get an email with your code. But for now, like I said, hacks, one, two, three, four, five, six, come and verify our code and web bam, we're in the app. And if we come into what's happening here in Superbase, obviously this is the Dockerized employment, but you can see here, if we come over to authentication users, I have two users, test two and test that example. They both have used this OTP magic link sign in. And uh, yeah, it's just super great. There's not uh, passwords that people will have to manage. Like I said, I'm going to put a password backup just for the people who can't get in for, for whatever reason, I can configure and generate them a password. And then, uh, you know, we can set up OTP from there. But check out the database. One thing that I love about Superbase is the schema visualizer. So you can check out your whole tables, everything here. There's still more work to be done here. I'm sure tables will change. This is badass. Love this feature. I'm a very visual person. So having this to just kind of walk you through at a high level, amazing. But if we come into our tables here and we check out the projects table, you'll see I have a ton of generated projects here at different statuses. And now if we come back into our app, we go to our projects tab, you can see all of those projects here at different statuses. So that's where the segment control is going to filter out the project based off of status. I think it's great. So next we need to start diving into the actual project creation screen. I think this screen will be reusable for inventory. It's gonna be the same, think like Notion, like when you go and create something new in Notion, you get pulled out to that modal, you can drag it up. I think that's what we're gonna rock here. Um, right now, if you click on a project, you get it brought out to the detail screen. Eventually, this is where you'll also edit this details. But as you all saw in a previous video, if you click the plus button, it just generates a brand new project. So you saw the 10 went to 11 here on to do. If we come in here, you can see now we have a brand new Superbase record. So we are authenticated with Superbase. We are storing the data in Superbase. We still need to store the images in Superbase and load the images dynamically. Right now, it's just a hard-coded URI. As you all saw in the simulator, everything is just the same here, or the same picture. Obviously, that won't cut it. We need to get some default graphics made so that if you don't want to upload a picture, it still will publish something there, some kind of like little, you know, box with like a wrench in it or something like that. I don't know. We'll get there. Progress. Progress is being made. We did go through that hurdle of Atlas, I'm super disappointed because I thought Atlas was gonna be so freaking cool, that local first approach. When I was using the anonymous login, it was so good, it was snappy, it was fast, but obviously we can't use anonymous login for a production-based app. So this is the new route we're headed, and I think at this rate, we're making good progress. I did officially announce in the private Facebook group for this app that we're gonna try to launch an MVP sometime in July. And I think uh, we're right on target to do that. There still feels like a huge mountain of work. My head keeps going back to the finished product stage. And we don't need a finished product. We just need people to create and track things. I think at the bare minimum, they should be able to create a project without steps. So just really kind of what you see on the screen now, you know, the title, the customer, quantity, things like that. They should be able to create the inventory. They should be able to create financial records and upload receipts. And I think that's it. Like, I think uh, the rest of it, is amazing additions to that, but let just people start creating things and tracking things in this app, which is, you know, 85% of this app. So the fact that we have this Kanban board layout, you know, done outside of redoing the, the cards to make them finalized, once we get all the buttons clicked and once we set up the, the creation screens, I think we're ready to start shipping. And sometimes that sounds scary because 
us developers are like, I just need the finished product. Like, I don't want to ship it. It's not good enough yet. And I promise you, ship it, get feedback, get feedback early and often. And that is going to help print out the roadmap for what features you should add on next. And it just gets the people excited. Like it gives the users more time to grow with the app and build that community with the app so that it's not just you throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Speaking of community, I wanna give a huge shout out to Jacob. And if you've not seen his YouTube channel, highly recommend it. Jacob sucks at code. Uh, he doesn't suck at code. He has a Discord community for a product that he's making called Sub. It is a paid community, so it's a private community. If that's your type of jam, I highly encourage you to check out his private paid community. It's a couple bucks a month, but I'll tell you what, it is full of really amazing developers that are super keen on building, super keen on helping each other, just chopping it up, having a good time. We've already had a group hangout where everybody's actually on voice. You get to hear other real people. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of exciting. This isn't promoted. I'm not sponsored. I am technically a mod in the channel, but it's, it's just a lot of really amazing people. The product is super cool. If, like I said, if you are keen on business, SaaS, or building, check out his channel, check out his journey because I'm having a lot of fun and I think y'all will too. But it's a beautiful day. So we're gonna crack on with the rest of this code. And with that, I will see you all next week. Peace.